All right. Good afternoon, everybody. How is your weekend? And uh, welcome to uh, this webinar. Uh, here, uh, we will be detailing how I look at this market, uh, doing top-down analysis of NAPR I want to take a look at. All right. And uh, factoring in uh, the implication of fundamentals into any setup uh, that we see on the technical point of view. This uh, makes you to be right in most of the time. All right, so I know many of you do not look into monthly, you don't look at uh, weekly, don't even look at daily, just start from four hours, H4, H1, and so on and so forth, okay? But, and uh, you have been deceived most of the time that uh, you have no business with a, a monthly time frame. you know? You have no business with weekly time frame. Yeah? Some say, ah, just go to H4 time frame. look at what H4 is doing, then look at uh, what H1 is doing and take a position, liars liars this is how they deceive uh, uh retail traders and that's why they don't make money in the market okay even if you have even if you are not a swing trader guys even if you are just a day trader you need to know the structure the structure of the market in higher time frame in monthly in weekly in fact if there is a quarter you know time frame look at what's happening in a quarter all right, that gives you the perspective of where the market is going. You have an idea of probable direction. And once you have this idea of the probable direction of the market, you are not going to trade against it. All right, you are not going to trade against it. So let's start from a DXY. For the sake of those that do not know what is called DXY, DXY is uh what we use you know is what we use to gauge the move of us dollar all right we use it to gauge the moves of us dollar okay we use it to gauge the move of us dollar and uh, dxy is a combination of basket of currency okay it's a combination of basket of currency. All right. So uh, you have the euro, you have the euro, you have the GBP, GBP, you have the JPY, JPY, and I think one or two others. Okay, go and do your research. But you only euro constitute about. 52 to 53% of this basket of uh, currency. Only 52, about 52 to 53%. Okay, that is why you see that DXY and Euro USD are very, very, you know, are, are positively correlated. See, Euro and USD, they are what? Positively correlated. Are you okay now? So, uh, looking at uh, this pair, uh, this instrument on monthly time frame, guys. On monthly time frame, uh, hold on, please let it load. Okay, on monthly time frame, I want this to push up. Okay, to break this top. Can you see? To break this top. Can you see? We're having a perspective of where we want the market to go on a monthly time frame. Why should we think so, guys? Because we see that there is a corrective structure here. This is a flat correction, a flat corrective structure that is meant to push up to the upside. Do you understand? Just as you see flat corrective structure here, okay, and what happened to the market? The market push up to the upside. The same thing is repeating itself here. So we want a push up to the upside in dollar. So you go to weekly, go to weekly. Can you see that structure that we spotted 
on a monthly. Can you see it's getting clearer right here on the weekly? Can you see? Boom. Can you see? So if that is the case, are you expected to uh, buy at this level? No. Remember, when it corrected itself here, what does it do? It push. After the push, what happened? It made a corrective structure and push. So you are expecting a similar corrective structure here before you push to the upside. Is that okay now? All right. So that is a weekly. We go to daily. Is that corrective structure ready? So now that corrective structure we are waiting for is probably part of this uh, structure. You may have this, you may have this, you may have this, okay? You have this kind of corrective structure and you have a move to the upside, okay? So in four hours, can you see? In four hours, since we are expecting the corrective structure and this corrective structure is a bigger one, so and this has broken this top, what are you expecting? We need a corrective structure to the downside, meaning that this will be part of the corrective structure. We are expecting downside of uh, DXY. We are expecting it downside to correct what? Downside. Okay, can form one, two, three, one, two, three, and push down before we resume upside. So don't expect dollar to strengthen when we enter the market next week. Dollar is going to weaken when we enter uh, the market next week. It's going to weaken. Okay, and when you look at uh, when we look at daily, do we see any sign to that effect? Do we see any sign to that effect? Yes, you see a sign to that effect. You see candlestick that matters. Okay, that is a sign that we are coming down. All right, that's a sign that we are coming down. So if we go to uh, go to daily, uh, if we go to four hours. That's supposed to be your entry time frame. What do you see? Your, I told you once you see that signal in uh, uh, daily, you are going to you are going to find an impulse, a fine impulse in one hour. So if you do this impulse, what do you see? You see that it has hit six, uh, sixty one point eight to seventy eight, but it hit it with impulsive move. So you are not going to jump into the market and start selling here. Because you are, uh, you, the market has hit uh, sixty one point eight or seventy eight percent retracement. Okay, it came with an impulse. So what you are going to do is that allow this market to correct to fifty to sixty one point eight. Uh, let me show you. Uh, what I would like to do is that I would like to take a fib of this leg. Okay, and I will want the market to come down to this level and then from there, let it pull up. Okay, so by the time you pull up this way, guys, you see that it has formed uh, a three wave structure to the upside. Okay, it is only at this junction that you can take a few of this one and this one will come to 78% retracement. This is where you find opportunity to sell off DXY to the downside. You see? So I'm not saying that you are, not good, you are going to trade DXY, but structure is structure. If you know how to analyze one, if you see the same thing in others, you also know how to analyze it. Is that okay now? Is that okay now? And then what is, you can see that this is a flag that is uh, 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 happening here. Can you see that this flag is slightly lower low? This low is lower than this one. This low is lower than this one. And the same thing is being re replicated here on the indicator. You are also having a lower low, lower low, lower low. Can you see this low is lower than this? This low is lower than this. And what does it suggest? It suggests that there is no divergence, no divergence. And because there is no divergence, the move to the downside is highly probable. Is that okay now? The move to the downside is highly probable. And then if you look at this, you see this? You see this? Can you see? You're having a lower high here. Okay. This low is, is, is lower than this 
uh, this uh, this high rather this high is lower than this high okay but you expect that on the other side here should be lower than this level can you see corresponding uh, uh levels here is a high here is a high but this high is lower than this high so we expect this high to be lower than this high now but what we see is that this high is higher than this high. Can you see this one making a higher high? This one making a lower high. This is a divergence. And this type of divergence is what we call hidden, uh, uh, hidden bearish divergence. Okay? Hidden bearish divergence. And it is a divergence that, that proves the continuation to the downside. When you have a Hidden bearish divergence is a divergence that proof that there's going to be continuation to the downside. And if you spot it on the other side and you come to the stochastic and you are seeing stochastic resetting itself at the top, you can never lose the trade. Even though it's this correction to 50%, this market is going to come here before it will make possible move to the upside. And at times too, it does not bother to make that uh, bigger correction at times, it doesn't bother to make it. What you just do is, it has made, if you go to a smaller time frame, like 15 minutes, you will see that the move that we are calling an import may just have been a, uh, a secret, you know, a secret three-wave structure, guys. This will have been a secret uh, three-wave structure. Can you see? One, two, with a shallow retracement. And this one comes to the downside. Okay, imports. 61.8, your entry here, guys, and boom, to the downside. I, is that okay now? So that is the analysis for uh, DXY. So now we we'll go to Euro for you to see that the opposite of DXY is what you find in Euro, okay? The opposite of DXY is what you find in Euro. So let's go to monthly, okay? We'll go to monthly, you see, that right here, real quick, guys. On monthly time frame, you have the move, you have the three wave correction, you're having the move to the downside. Okay, at least we should get uh, equal leg between here and this one. Okay, so you need a move to the downside. So let's go to weekly. Okay, this is weekly. At this point in time, guys, you are expected to we are expected to have a correction. We should have a bigger correction because look at this market. It has been selling, giving us smaller correction, selling, smaller correction, selling, smaller correction. But at this stage, guys, the market is going to give us a bigger correction for it to be able to push to the downside very well. So that's why we may be expecting a move to the upside to correct. Just as in DSY, you remember, it has been pushing up. We now, make, we now expect a move, a correction to the downside. This euro, USD, does the opposite of DXY. We are looking for a correction to the upside before we sell. Okay, that is it on a weekly time frame. Okay, on a daily time frame, what do we see, guys? On a daily time frame, you see that... This move to the downside from this side to this side can take a few to have an idea of how big we want this correction to be. At least 50% retracement. And then from there, we make a move to the downside. Okay? So if that's the case, if we are looking for this uh, move to the upside as uh, a retracement, then what do we need to see, guys? All we need to see is this market has come, uh, has make a, made a move. It has come down to retest the low, but it did not break this low. So by structure, by structure in itself, this is still uh, a what? A higher low. This is a low, this is a higher low. So all I want to see in Euro USD in daily time frame is that possibly I would love to see on Monday, I would like, love to see a candle open this way, come to break this low, 
Okay, another candle opens on Tuesday and gulf the previous candle. Once I have this, guys, once I have this, I'm good to go. All I have to do, I hope you understand what I'm saying. I want to see a candle that comes down and then the next day, another daily candle that engulfed the previous one. And that signifies the existence of a bullish pressure. So once you have that, you have a confirmation of candlestick that matter. Just like here, guys, look at it. If you have been paying attention, look at it. This candlestick that matter happening right, right at the top of this corrective structure. So if, before we come down to this side, if you have to uh, uh, go back to this one, if you have to go back to one hour time frame, you are going to see a fine impulse in one hour time frame. And that is the correction you are going to take to the downside. Look at it. Look at it, impulse. Can you see the impulse? I told you. Once you see the candlestick that matter that I told you, that I taught you guys in daily time frame, when you step down to one hour, you are going to see a fine impulse. That is the impulse that must be retraced to 50 to 61.8, boom. And then at 50 to 61.8, you are going to have your sell opportunity to the downside. Can you see? The sell opportunity to the downside. Where's your stop loss? Your stop loss is just above 78% retracement. And then this is your trade. Once I see it, guys, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't miss it. You know, I don't miss it. And then if you play, if you play this, you know, you are going to get that uh, downside. Is that okay now? All right. So let's go back to daily. You can see that was that was why you had this move to the downside. All right, but now we are looking for a pullback to the upside. So what am I telling you? Right now here, all these candlesticks here, all these candlesticks here, you see these candlesticks here? There is no one, as far as I'm concerned, that, signif that signifies a buying pressure, a buying pressure. They are sick, okay? They are sick. You can't compare it with what you have here, guys. Can you compare it with what you have here? No. This is a sick, you know, situation. You are having both buyers and sellers struggling here. But you want a situation where you have excess demand over supply. And for you to have excess demand over supply, you are going to have a move down, a bearish candle will come here. Okay. And you have another bullish candle that totally engulfed this one. As soon as we see it, guys, we know that there is buying pressure right on Euro USD. And what will you do after you have spotted that fine uh, uh, buying pressure? Let me show you the kind of buying pressure I'm referring to. Let me show you uh, the kind of buying pressure I'm referring to. Yes. You see something like this, guys? Something like this. You see something like this? Fine. Um, if you see something like this, fine. Can you see? If you see it at this critical area, guys, at this critical areas, if you see something like this, I, I don't like to see the bullish, uh, uh, the, the candle that engulf. I don't want to see wicks on top. I don't want to see it. I want to see a perfect one. So once you see it here, just step it down to one hour. Because as soon as you see it, that will have, will have created a bullish impulse on one hour time frame. And you just look for correction to uh, 50 to 61.8. All right, see, see correction to 50 to 61.8. And then what waves are you targeting, guys? You have seen this, you have seen this, you may see this, this, and then you are targeting this wave to the upside, okay? This wave to the upside is the one that is going to give you uh, the one that is going to give you the correction of this push to the downside from here to this side. So we want this wave to push us to what? To 50 to 61.8. And then are ah, we going to trade it? We will be happy if this pair move down, correct, move down, break this low. You remember how to trade correction how to trade correction after a big impulse. This is a big impulse, all right? If you have it, if you have three wave structure right in the middle here, A, B, and C, 
And this sea has broken this low, guys. At this level, I can assure you that the market is going to trend to the upside to break this top. Okay? To break this top. This is the wave uh, that is going to come to 50 to 61.8. And from here, guys, we're going to look for sell opportunity to the downside. This is how you look at the market, guys. Okay? So let's move on. Uh, GBP, you see the same thing we are talking about on the uh, uh, GBP USD. When you look at it at monthly time frame, you see you have this structure is complete. You have this structure is complete. You have this one to begin to move to the downside. Remember that all these uh, 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 directional bias we are having, are not just having it for fun. We have gone through uh, trading economics. We have picked all the data. We have analyzed all the data, and based on it, we are, you know, aligning the data that we get from the fundamental with the technical, and it perfectly aligns. Okay, so right now, guys, we are looking for correction. Although uh, the predominant trend right here is downtrend because this structure is complete. Okay, we are looking for this to the downside or monthly. So you can see the importance of monthly time frame now. Now on weekly time frame, you see this weekly time frame. Watch here, right here, uh, right here, guys. You see, you can clearly see that many people were thinking that this uh, correction was going to lead to this upside. Okay, that was how they thought. But if you look at a uh, uh, fake flag test that I, I taught you, you watch my divergent trading strategy, you will see what I call fake flag test. This is a flag that is meant to break up to the upside. But if you look at the other side here, guys, what do you see? This one is making a lower low, guys. Divergence is supposed to be lower low here and higher low here for, for us to catch this move to the upside. But what do you see here? This low is lower than this one. 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 Can you see? The same thing here, lower, low, low, lower than this one. This low is lower than this one. This low is lower than this one. Can you see? This is what is called a convergence, okay? And convergence, convergence lead to what is called trend continuation. Trend continuation. Why convergence? Convergence means that there's going to be an imminent reversal. Do you understand now? So anytime, so I'm going to teach you a trick right now, guys. So when, once you see this, I'm going to teach you a trick. Just watch me, watch me. Once you get it once, you get it forever, guys. So when you are having, uh, when you are having the resistance, the support of this kind of flag, Okay, when you are having the support right, right now, and you have spotted that it's a convergence, it's not a divergence, meaning that this uh, continuation to the downside is what is going to happen. You now watch which, which wave breaks this support. Which waves break it? Look at it here. This is the wave that breaks it, guys. This is the wave that breaks it. Just take a fib of that wave, all right, take a few of that wave, target 50 to 61.8. And in this case, because it's very sharp, it hits 78. It's allowed, no problem. And at 78, what do you see? Candlestick that matter. What do you see at 78, guys? Candlestick that matter. Even when it came down in retreats, it will never break the top. I, I told you when I was uh, 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 teaching. Uh, when I was taking a course on candlestick that matter, if you watch that video very well, I said the best thing to happen is for you to see a railroad track for a, a bearish railroad track uh, in a situation where the bullish one is having a rejection from the upside. Can you see this green candle is having a wick, a big wick from the upside? That big wick is, is, a, is a signal that shows rejection, okay? And that rejection, the weeks is taking liquidity from the above. And then you see uh, the red candle 
is a very healthy one. Can you see? Very healthy one. So by that reason, we know that this market is never going to come over here because liquidity has been grabbed and there is no incentive to return to that level. Okay? And what happened? Boom, to the downside. All right? So you have learned something right here about convergence uh, and how to trade it. Okay? But right now, you have had another impulse. We are going to take this as another impulse. You see this impulsive leg to the downside? This is where it terminates. Why don't I put it here, guys? Why don't I put it here? Why did I say here? All right? You need to understand the concept of orthodox bottom. All right? Concept of orthodox bottom. If you watch my course on Elliott Web Theory, I think part four or so, you will see the concept of orthodox bottom. If you are having a wave that is making a lower lower low, lower high, lower low, lower low, lower high. And at this stage, you make a boom to the downside and then I made a corrective structure here. After this corrective structure, it made another move, another corrective structure here. Okay? So now, because it made a corrective structure here and it's making another one here, if you want to fib, if you want to fib, the retracement of this impulse is going to be from here to this place. Why are you taking it from this level to this level? Why are you not considering this level? Because the reason is that corrective structure started here. Corrective structure started here. This is also a corrective structure that break this low. So this is your orthodox bottom. This is not your orthodox bottom. This is the reason why FIB kept on failing many people in the market. Now, let's apply that theory right into this uh, uh, market. From this level, it's going to be to this level, not here. Impulse stopped here. So I'm going to mark 50 to 61.8, which is right here really quick. Can you see? That's 50 to 61.8 now. So if you step down now to daily, let's just watch that area, that level, and see why I'm confident about this level, I'll show you shortly. You, do you see that this move that come down here, okay, around this level that we show our 50 to 61.8, if you look left, do you see a big candle that correspond to that level? Do you see a big candle? Yes. Which is the biggest candle? Look at it here. This is the biggest candle along this corresponding level. That is the biggest candle. And if that is the biggest candle, then we want to see the end of the candle before it here. We want to see the candle after it. Where does it end? Here. So the whole of this level, guys, is the supply zone. That is the trick, guys. That is where we are expecting uh, uh, GBP USD to come over to. And if you now step down to one hour time frame, guys, step down to one hour time frame, you are going to see what we are talking about. You have seen that you have one, two, and three. Look at three in form of one, two, three, four, and five. This is how you understand Elliott wave theory, guys. Look at it. Okay, this is wave C. Ending diagonal, you will see this wave C and the diagonal. Simple. So, this is a, a three wave structure in a, A, B, and C. Do you see this? All right. I'm going to show you another thing right now, guys. You now see another a three wave structure. One. This is one, two, and three. Corrective structure. Okay. This is with A. This is three wave structure. Uh, it can be WXY, it can be ABC. But for now, let's have it as with A, with B. So we want this wave C to come to this level. Do you understand now? Remember, remember something that is very, very important. Remember, I told you there is a supply zone here. So we want this market to come over to that side. Okay? We want it to come over to that side. Then, then when are you going to take this C? If you are to if you are to buy it, you have to check. Did you get engulfing pattern? 
do you get a candlestick that matter? Okay, so this one is coming down. I would like this one to come down. After it has come down, probably break this low. And I need a candlestick that is here. Can you see? This is how you will time your entry, guys, that you will be wrong. It's how to do it. Once you see engulfing candlesticks here, once it has finished, for me, step down to one hour time frame. By virtue of you spotting the engulfing candlestick pattern here, when you step down to one hour time frame, you are going to see a fantastic impulse. Now, target 50 to 61.8. All right. As soon as you get there, guys, that is your trade to the upside. Simple as ABC. And then we'll now be targeting this level. Is that okay now? That is it about uh, 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 GBP USD. And once we get to this level, we want to see a move to the downside using daily. Look at the candlestick that matter over here that maybe give a railroad, uh, railroad track uh, uh, candlestick pattern, or maybe it gives uh, engulfing, bearish this engulfing over here, then step down to one hour time frame, check your impulse, check your correction to uh, 50 to 61.8 in case of flat or other corrective structure, but make sure it gets to 78% retracement in the case of a zigzag corrective structure. For people that do not know what zigzag is all about, watch my video on corrective structure. You see an impulse, you see one, you see two, you see three. Okay, this zigzag will usually come to 78% uh, retracement of this impulsive leg, which is exactly here. Okay, that's number one condition for the formation of a zigzag. And then the A leg of a zigzag, which is this leg, guys, must be retraced to 50%. 50%. Can you see? So when you take a fib of the A leg that is impulsive, you see 50 to 61.8%. That's the retracement level, guys. And you have this boom to the uh to the upside. Okay, that is what you should expect. Okay, so now let's move on. So we we'll go to uh, USD JPY. USD JPY, guys. Monthly, monthly. You see, if you don't look at monthly, guys, you will be tempted to be looking for sell opportunity of USD JPY. Okay, let's go and check uh, this particular one that give us much data. Give us much data. Okay. Can you see that this market has been selling? Okay, you see the impulse on the monthly, you see corrective structure, you see another impulse. Okay, you see small correction, you see another down. All right, so I've taught you several guys that once you see something like this, where was the last reaction, guys, before the big corrective structure started to happen? Remember, the big corrective structure started to happen here. Where was the last reaction? Where was the peak of the last reaction? This is the peak. I am confirming to you that by my own theory, USD JPY is not going to look back. It's not going to fall down until it breaks this reaction uh, level. USD JPY does not break this level, it's not going to fall. You can put this video, uh, uh, put, uh, save this video, and keep watching this video. And if I lie in years to come, come and remind me that you lied. If USD JPY does not cross this reaction level to the upside, it's not going to find a comfortable sell to the downside. Okay, based on this idea, guys, I have seen that on this monthly time frame, this is my impulse. All right, this is my A contracting flat in the middle, and then boom. Simple. Look at it here. Look at it here, guys. This is a contracting flat. A is a contracting flat. B and then C. Do you see? And then since this C has broken the level of, and this is big A. Remember, this is big A. This is just the internal structure. This three wave down is B. So you want a C that break this top. Why do we want this top to be breaking or to be broken? Why do we want the top of A to be broken, guys? Because the C here, uh, the, the last wave C here of the B structure here 
has broken the beginning of this A. So for that reason, I want my C to break this top. And by the time it breaks this top, it has fulfilled the rule I told you that this reaction at the top must be broken. Okay? So do not expect to sell uh, to sell uh, USD JPY. You're going to keep coming up until you break this top. I don't know. It's possible for there to be correction at uh, a certain stage along the line. We'll check it later. And uh, what we see here as somehow an impulsive leg, it's not actually an impulsive leg. When we go to smaller time frame, you see that it's a B with A, B, and C. C in form of what? Diagonal. This is A, this is B, and this is C. So if that is the case, guy, look at this leg here, must be equal to this leg here. Okay, and let's project it. When you want to check equality of width length, all right, equality of width length, what you use is fib extension. Trend-based fib extension, drop it here, drop it at the end of A, take it to the end of C, watch 50, uh, 100 to 120% retracement uh, extension. Can you see it here? Does it correspond with the level I was telling you before? Oh, yes. It has to get there. It has to get there. Okay? So you are getting the gist now, guys. So now... What I we do expect on, if we are expecting this to keep going higher. So what do we expect to see? We need to see a fine correction because the move has picked up. We cannot join at this present level that this market is. Remember, we are done with uh, monthly. We are now on weekly time frame. We cannot join uh, this bullish move. We need a fantastic correction. A correction that is something like this. A correction that is something like this, guys. Minimum, we need it to come here. To what? To have a push to the offside. That is, market analysis is, is, is not difficult, guys. Let's go to daily. Want to see, want to see that correction. Want to see, it's showing a sign already. Want to see that correction. Once we see it, we are going to push to the offside. Okay? So for now, there is no setup for USD JPY, but just know that it cannot continue to go up as it is. It's going to make a corrective structure to the downside. Correction to the downside for USD JPY. Correction to the downside, minimally, you must break this low. You must break this low here. Come over here. From here, you look for a buy opportunity to the upside. Okay? Then let's go to Euro JPY. Euro JPY, guys, monthly. All I'm doing for you here, guys, is top-down analysis. Top-down analysis. And you see how we use every concept, every theory to do it. Okay? So the same thing is happening here. This is a contracting flat, guys. It's an impulse. Contracting flat. We need this to go up. All right? We need this to go up. You must have an equal leg between this and this. So... Euro JPY may not look back until we hit this level. That's how I see it on the monthly. And then this wave to the downside will now come up, will now come down here. Simple. That's monthly. Let's look at daily. Okay, daily. Remember, daily, we want this to keep going up. So if it must keep going up, we need a corrective structure. Okay, we need a corrective structure. Right now, guys. You have this correction, okay? A, one, two, and three. That's a corrective structure and down. That is with A, with B, and with C. And then this move to the upside, you're having it here, okay? But now, we are projecting upside in monthly time frame. So if we are projecting upside in monthly time frame, okay, if you are having a sell opportunity in weekly, we may not have to touch it, okay? You are seeing a reaction here and a move. You can see a reaction, you have a, you have a move. Don't, don't touch it until you have a bigger move, a bigger correction before uh, you know that the market knows what it's doing, okay? That is doing what you want, rather. So right here, guys, you may have one, two, and three, then begin to push up from there. And then the... Uh,
the emergence of this corrective structure is what will prove just like something like this, guys. When you see something like this here, is what will prove that that upside is resuming. That move to the upside is re resuming. Do you understand? But you cannot, you cannot touch this pair until you see a valid corrective structure in daily time frame. All right. You can't say uh, you can't see this uh, pullback being enough. This pullback is very strong. It's not enough. Just like this pullback is very strong. It's not enough for you to start buying to the upside. That is why you have this correction and you have another pull, uh, 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 drop down. Okay. The same thing is applicable here. Can you see that this one is what happened here? But we cannot buy because we are expecting a corrective structure here and a drop down. It is only when drop, this drop down happen and pick liquidity at this demand that we have a comfortable area. Once we see engulfing candlestick pattern, this is the structural area that I keep shouting. I keep telling you guys, that's the structural area. Let's test the fib. Take a fib of this leg, guys. Where is 50 to 61.8? Any candlestick pattern anywhere does not matter. Here, this candlestick pattern is an engulfing one, but it does not matter. That's what we are saying. This is a correct candlestick pattern for you to take a buy. But is it a structural area? No, it's not a structural area. L let's take a few of this leg to the upside. Why is this a uh, leg? Why is this so important? It's so important because it broke structure. Where is structure, guys? Look at structure. This came, broke it ferociously, broke this. It broke structure. That means this level is very important. And that is why we can take this level as a strong demand area. Okay, so if it's a strong demand area, we can start the leg of, an, of our impulse there to this level. Okay, where is 50 to 61.8, guys? Look at it here. So if this is 50 to 61.8, then we are looking for a corrective structure that is going to come to that level. All right, we are looking for a corrective structure that is going to come to that level. And, and how do we see that corrective structure? We are going to look at it in the daily time frame. In the daily time frame, you see an impulse here. You see a correction to this level. You see this move coming here. Okay? It is only when this move comes here that it has come to structural area. Okay? And if you have a bearish candle here, you must see another bullish candle here. Okay? So if you see it this way, uh, let me just... Uh, let me leave the color. You understand what I'm saying already. At this level, you now check to the left. Do you see a uh, uh, correct demand uh, uh, level? Yes, demand level. It exists here. So from this level, step down to one hour time frame, pick your entry neatly, and then have a continuation to the upside in line with daily time frame. In line with daily time frame. Is that okay now? So that's how you go about it. Let's do uh, GBP, JPY. The same thing is applicable from daily to everything. So uh, from monthly to weekly to let's just go to daily. In the case of uh, GBP, JPY, guys, let's go to daily. Okay, we want this uh, corrective structure to happen. We want this load to be taken. So this will form a corrective structure to the upside, but then, you already have an impulse uh, on daily time frame. If you go to uh, one hour, you want to have a corrective structure of this impulsive leg to the downside from this leg to this leg. You see, this is 78. So you want this 78 to, uh, to happen. Uh, why? You already have a strong impulse here. You want a correction to 50 to 61.8 and another strong impulse to this level. Then from this level, we can look for sell opportunity to the what? To the downside, okay? That is a uh, 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 GBP, JPY. We we'll, we'll look for opportunity to the downside. Then gold, monthly. You know, repeatedly, I have said it, no investor anywhere in the world, good investor for that matter, would like to buy gold at the present level. 
No investor will want to buy gold at the present level. If I see a buy opportunity, I won't take it. But if I see a sell opportunity, good for me. Gold is coming to break this low. Come here and we'll go to the upside. That is an expanding flat, guys. This is with A, this is with B, and this with B has broken this top. So this with C is expected to break this low. Okay, and after that, we resume a move to the upside. That's monthly time frame. So since we are looking for sell, we are looking for sell because we are right here at the top. We are not going to, we are not going to take any buy opportunity. So right now, uh, we are looking for sell and uh, we already have our impulse in the weekly time frame, guys. We already have our impulse. Let's go to daily. Okay. Let's go to daily. Go to daily, guys, from uh all right you go to daily from this level guys from this level to this level we want to mark out our 50 to 61.8 but i'm i'm very sure that we are going to make this uh, 61.8 here. Why do I think we are going to make 61.8? Can you see that this is with A here, has already made an impulse. This part of the correction is with A, and then one, one, two, three, and one. That is A, B, and C. That's with B. This with A, this with B. Now we want this with C to happen, to come to this top, where we look for sell opportunity to the downside. Is that okay now? So, so uh, if we want to buy gold, now if we want to buy gold, fine. We can step down already right now, real quick, guys. You have uh, a bearish move. You have a candlestick pattern that, that engulf it. You have this powerful move. Now you are having this move to the downside. So if possible, this move to the downside come here. Another one come here. Another one come here. We now see a bullish one that engulf this one. That's where our trade is going to pick up from. All we have to do is after seeing this candlestick pattern, we just move to daily time frame, guys. Daily time frame. Look for the impulse. Look for the correction to 50 to 61.8 and take our trade to the upside. Where are we targeting, guys? We are targeting this level, the supply. This level uh, around one nine one nine three zero. So once we get to one nine two seven to one nine three zero, we look for sell opportunity to the downside. USD card, guys. USD card. Okay, monthly. Can you see that in USD card monthly we have this structure, guys? We have these three waves down. We have these three waves up. You have another impulse. Okay, so this is A, this is B, and this is C. After this fine move to the upside. So what are we expecting, guys? We need this fine move to, to the upside to complement this. So our bias for USD card is a buy. Okay, our bias is for a buy. But then, then, but then why we have a bias for a buy? After the first move here, you are having a complex structure, okay? Complex structure. Watch, let me show you complex structure. Can you see these three waves here? You see this move up here? That's the move up you see here. You see the move down we see here? That's the move down you see here. This is a complex structure, A, B, and C. After this corrective structure is over, guys, you're having this move to the upside. You as a card is not likely to look back in coming session okay it's not likely to look uh, back that is uh, weekly daily daily now is it good to buy here no why because right here we're already at the top we're already at a, a, a resistance uh, level and see where the buy started from see where the buy started from so we're already at a resistance it's, it's not good for us to buy a usd card at that level we have to allow some measure of correction. 
So what I will do is simple. Since I'm looking for this leg to continue to the outside, if correction is happening here, I want to take a fifth of this leg. If it stops here, remember it's still bullish. So we have not uh, been able to get the exact level where correction is going to end. So if uh, we, we look for uh, 50 to 61.8, and of course you see that we have a demand area at that level, okay? We have right here, real quick guys, this is a demand area at that level. From this level, guys, all we need to see is that after a bearish candle, we want to see a bullish candle that engulf it. Once you see this guys, go to one hour time frame and from the, uh, uh, the candlestick that engulf, just try to pick an impulsive leg there. Okay, you're going to see an impulse here. Uh, let me show you right here, real quick, guys. I'm going to see impulse in one hour time frame. Let it correct to 50 to 61.8. Pick your entry, guys, to the upside. Pick your entry to the upside right here. Pick your entry to the upside. Okay, so that is it about the uh, USD card. I'm going to show you guys uh, two other. A setup that I have for you, two other setup that I have for you uh, monthly. NZDCHF. Okay, let's go to IDC. IDC will give us a better data, guys. Okay, whatever be the case, this market is to the upside, but right now, we want this first leg, this first leg, guys. This first leg, let it is now at around 38% retracement, which is as far as we are concerned, is too shallow for us. So we want this retracement on a daily on a monthly time frame to come as low as 50 to 61.8. And then can we see how this market will navigate its way back to that level? Let's check weekly. And if we check weekly, you will see that. This market is making a running flat right here at the middle. This is with A that comes in form of a, 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 a diagonal. And then you have with B. So you are looking for with C to come down to this area. Okay, to come down to this area. All right. So right now, in the long term, it is bullish. But right now, it is bearish. Do you see from the analysis? So let's go to daily. Let's see how we can look for a buy opportunity to the downside. Buy opportunity to the downside. Of course, this has made, uh, this is a, uh, a, uh, what is called uh, a diagonal. So you have your will be here, guys. You have your will be here, guys. This area is will be. Now this will see is to come down to hit that level that we spotted on the monthly time frame. But then, if you look at it on the daily time frame here, you see a beautiful impulse to the downside. You see a beautiful impulse to the downside with a big supply zone. Can you see very big supply zone here, guys? It's a big supply zone. But then we are going to con we are going to concentrate on area uh, levels in the supply zone that correspond to fifty to sixty one point eight, guys. Remember the impulse has not ended. But let's assume this is the end of the impulse. Then we're going to concentrate on area around this level, guys, to look for sell opportunity on uh, uh, what we call it NZDCHF. Okay, so how do we do that, guys? How do you do that? You allow this uh, uh, market to come, let it come, irrespective of the corrective structure is developing. As soon as it gets to this area, look at the candlestick that matter, candlestick that matter at this level. You want to see something that look like this, something that look like this at the top side here, something that look like this at the top side here. If you can get something like that here, guys, as soon as it has printed itself, okay, this system will help you so much, guys. It will not allow you to jump into trade uh, without uh, a selling or a buying pressure. So as soon as it gets there, and it has printed itself here, guys. All you have to do, this engulfing, this candle, this red candle, 
that engulf this one is going to print an impulse for you in one hour time frame. Okay. And the impulse that is going to create for you in one hour time frame, all you do, guys, is to look for the correction of that impulse to 50 to 61.8. And then that's your entry, guys. Boom to the downside. The market will never go above this level because it has shown a selling pressure by printing, you know, engulfing candlestick pattern here. Do you understand now, guys? So this is the setup for NZDCHF. Last but not the least, guy, Euro GBP. All right, Euro GBP, guys. Monthly, monthly time frame. Okay, let's go to IDC. IDC, give us better data, please. All right. All right. Okay. So this leg, guys, flip this leg. Already you have seen before that. Already you have seen that this market is flowing up. You can see that you have a complete three-way structure here. You have a three-way structure here, you're running flat, and you have a move. So this is A, this is B, this is C. Okay, after that, you have a big impulse here. Everything that is happening here, guys, is a corrective structure for another upside. Can you see? So what will happen to Euro GBP even in 10 years to come, guys? I have forecasted it for you. Do you understand now? So it is not left for us to now analyze what is happening right here in the middle, what's happening right here in the middle, okay? Can you see that this market make a move down, three-way structure here, a flat, a regular flat in the middle, and then what are you expecting here, guys? One, one, two, and three, it move down. So Euro GBP, go and write it down, guys, it's coming down to around 77. It's coming down to around 77. So if you are buying at the current level, you are deceiving yourself, guys, please don't buy. Because analysis of the monthly time frame that I've done here is showing me that we need a leg down to make a three, three, three structure, which is three waves down, W, three waves up, X, and then three waves down, Y. This is what we are expecting in Euro GBP. So don't expect to buy euro against GBP in any pair, in any pair from now till probably end of this year or in the, till September or October, I expect euro to continue to weaken against the GBP. And if that is the case, if you are getting a setup on GBP card and euro card, don't bother to buy a uh, uh, euro card, buy GBP card because GBP is going to be stronger than euro in coming uh, months, okay? So let's go to weekly. And at this point in time, guys, the area that we are concerned about is this area, guys. That's the areas we are concerned about. That's where we want to get a move to the downside, okay? That's where we want to get a move to the downside. So we've got to analyze these guys you see, uh, you have this move, this with A. Sorry, I have to do it properly for you to understand. This is with A, guys. So this will be in the middle. You have A, this is one, this is two, and this is three. This will be, and this is boom. That's with C. Can you see, guys? You see, I'm cutting the waves. This is uh, uh, this with A. This is, hold on guys. Oh, uh, hold on guys. This is with A here. This is with B here. Can you see that this with B has broken this uh, low? So we want a situation where this with C will also come to break this top. Okay, and it's also possible that with B will not break that top before it continue to go down. All right, this is with A. This is with B. 
that have broken the beginning of this wave A. Ordinarily, we want this five wave structure to break this level here to form wave C. This is at supply level, it's supply. See, many at times, most of you are taught that at the resistance here is the supply. That is a line, that is a line. And that is why retail traders are not making money in the market because where they teach them is supply, it's not supply. Resistance is different from supply. Although you can see a resistance, a supply zone at resistance, but most of the time it is not there, okay? All this area, guys, you are having buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. That is not supply. But when order is pumped at this level, do you see the market doing, doing buy and sell again? It moved down straight to the downside. That's where we call supply area. So why, what, why we are a bit skeptical about entry on this market and thinking of possibility of more upside is that uh, this market could transform from uh, this uh, a present structure of a running flat to an expanding flat, okay? To break this top, simple. Can you see? It can, it, right now, it's a running flat to make downside, okay? But this running flat, guys, can turn to what? Expanding flat, take liquidity from this supply and then move down from here. So, but we are going to be, we are going to try to look for entry around this level. Okay. If that entry take us out, okay, at break even, we wait to form expanding flat and look for entry again. But the structure is very clear at this point in time, guys. Let's go to daily. So in this daily time frame, guys, we have seen that we are seeing uh, one, two, and three. So I'm projecting one, two, and three to break this low, and then one, two, and three to come to that supply area I told you. This is my expectation, all right? This is my expectation for this pair, guys. So right now here, guys, I'm, I'm looking for a buy opportunity. But before that buy opportunity, I want this market to come to break this low. That's expanding flat. Take liquidity from this demand zone, and then we'll make a move up to break this top again before we come down. It's simple. But then, if you want to capitalize on the present candlestick pattern that is printed at the top, you want to capitalize it to sell down to this uh, area that we must be mindful of, then what we need to do now is that right now, we see this candlestick that matter right here. It's a railroad track. It's a very good and beautiful one. So we can go to one hour time frame and see if we can recognize an impulse and look for a correction. So can we, can we spot an impulse? Yes, all right? So let me tell you why uh, this impulse has to be in form of uh, uh, three, no, I'll tell you that one in another day. Let's just go because I don't want this video to be too long. The time is going already. Just take this impulse, take this leg down. Uh, sorry. This is part of the correction. This one is part of the correction. So your impulse leg is from here to here. Simple. You are going to see the difference now. When you take the impulse from here, this level to this level, where is 50 to 61.8, guys? Look at it here. But assuming you extend your fifth to this level, can you see where 50 to 61.8 is giving you? So you are not taking an entry here. It will take you up here. You see it has hit your stop loss. Why? Because you did not apply your fifth correctly. This is how to do it. And then you already have, uh, you, already have um, uh, you already have this move. You have this move. You have this move. You can have three waves here. You can have three, a pullback here and then three waves here. Boom. Once you hit this level, guys, supply. Look at it. Look at this big candle. This impulse guy, where is the biggest candle that you find there? Look at it here. This is the biggest candle. That's where the supply is. Okay, we have a move to the downside. So we can capitalize on this move, guys, to the downside and take it to, to break this low. Okay, can take it to break this low. Okay, so once it breaks this low, guys, all we have to do is to what? Look for buy opportunity from here to the upside to take that top again, to take that top again and 
uh, come to the supply area in the daily time frame that I told you, come to the supply area, this area. Can you see that is an expanding flag? When it gets to this area, we step down to daily. When we get to daily, look at candlestick pattern that matter. Okay, engulfing candlestick at this structural area. Once it's, it's printed, bearish engulfing, step down to one hour time frame. Look for your impulse. Look for your correction to 61.8. If it is a zigzag, look at it to come to 78. Boom, to the downside. Once you cut it here, once it's cut here, at this level, this market will not stop until it breaks this low. This length here will be equal to this one. It's as simple as that. Is that okay, guys? So you can see how I do my technical analysis. And of course, you can see that all this uh, setup I have given you is because I already know the fundamental that is happening in the market. I already understand that there is fundamental, the fundamental of Euro and GBP, I already know it. That of CAD and USD, I already know it, okay? That of uh, GBP and GPY, I already know it. So based on the understanding of technical I have, I will, I will usually need to come to trading economies, look at some data and their changes, and then go back to my chart and apply the fundamental direction as I have picked them up from uh, the trading economies here or uh, uh, forestfactory.com or investing.com. You can use any one. Both of them uh, 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 brings out correct data. So once you get all these, then you are good to go. So it's as simple uh, as that, guys. So I want to know if any of you have uh, any question before we go. Uh, uh, does anyone have any question before we go? Emmanuel Iwundu, do you have any question? Do you have any question? Emmanuel, do you have any question before we go? All right, so no question. So that's it, guys. So consider to subscribe to this channel if you have not done so. If you enjoy the content, subscribe to it, uh, like the uh, uh, like the video, and, uh, Hello, and also uh, you can like the video and uh, uh, you can also share uh, the video. All right. Hello, sir. Yes. Are you on? Yes, I'm on, sir. Okay. Sorry. What's your question, please? There was a question. That, yeah. There was a question I asked. You said maybe in one of the live class you will treat it, so you don't want to type much. I talked about the, as in the time frame when to analyze the market and when to enter. You talk about. I asked about using the time frame. Which which time frame is it good to analyze, and also which time is it good to enter the trade? So you know, the, maybe in one of the you, class section you will talk okay. about. Okay, you mean the time frame that you should be analyzing? Yes, like for example, now let's assume now, okay, market will resume tomorrow being Sunday, right? Then let's okay. assume on Monday now. I want to analyze the market now. Let me say. I took my time around 7 a.m. to analyze the market. Maybe I used like four hours, as in four hours time frame to analyze the market. So after getting my analysis, then which time in Nigeria time again will I use to enter the trade? Okay, now listen to me. Listen to me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Listen to me. Right. Whether you are a day trader or you are a swing trader, whatever type of trader or position trader, whatever type of trader you are, you are, you should start your analysis from monthly. You should do a top-down analysis because at times there is a structure. You can see a structure in monthly that shows that you should go bearish. But if you are, if you go and start your analysis from daily, you might not see that bearish structure in monthly. Daily might give you the bullish leg, and you'll be facing, you'll be concentrating your effort on the bullish leg, whereas you are supposed to be looking uh, bearish. So start your analysis from monthly. Look at the structure. Look at the pattern. Once you get to structural level to uh, the lower time frame weekly, you know, once you get there, just as I have been doing it, then if you are now, if you are now, after you have done all this analysis from monthly to weekly to daily to four hours to one hour, if you are a day trader, go and pick, go and start, go and now concentrate on H4 or daily time frame and use that one as direction, okay? and then use one hour as entry or 15 minutes as entry. That is if you are a day trader. If you are a swing trader, you can make use of 
your analysis on weekly. Can you see the candlestick pattern that matter? The video on candlestick pattern that matter. I always say look for engulfing on which time frame? Daily time frame. The reason why I have to choose daily time frame is because I'm essentially a day trader. I'm more of a day trader than a swing trader. All right. I do not have, I have not developed adequate psychology to hold my trade for a long time. So because of that, I'm 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 a day trader. So for that reason, I don't look for engulfing on weekly time frame. Because if I look for engulfing on a weekly time frame, by the time I'm looking for uh, the impulse and correction on the daily, my stop loss is going to be very big. I don't want to do that. So rather, I want to look at structural completion on daily, weekly time frame. I will not look for engulfing candlestick on daily. So once I get it on daily, I will step down to one hour and look for impulse and correction to 50 to 61.8. You can also look for uh, engulfing candlestick pattern uh, at uh, in H4, in H4, if you are a day trader. So once you get it at H4, at structural area, all you have to do is to step down to maybe 15 minutes or 30 minutes and look for impulse and correction, take your trade to the downside. So there is no right or wrong. What is important is the type of trader you are. That's what is going to determine the time frame you are going to be using for your direction. All right. Myself now, I look for monthly, I look for weekly. Okay. But my direction is essentially monthly, weekly, and daily. All right. Then once I get what I'm looking for in terms of structure, once I get it in weekly, in monthly, weekly, and daily, once I can get it there, all I'm looking for in daily time frame is to see an engulfing candlestick pattern or a railroad track. Why is these two very important to me? It's important to me because they indicate the, ex, uh, uh, the presence of you know, selling or buying pressure, as the case may be. So once I can spot that, I know that, oh, I have seen a selling or a buying pressure. I'm a day trader. I will now go back to one hour. That's where I pick my entry. Once I go back to one hour, for the fact that we have seen a bearish impulse, a bearish engulfing here, I must see an impulse here in one hour. You must see an impulse in one hour. So you, you just have to wait to see the corrective structure get to 50 to 61.8. Remember, for you to get your entry, there are four rules. One, you must see your impulse in your entry time frame. Number two, you must be able to define your corrective structure. Number three, your corrective structure must hit 50 to 61.8. And if it's a zigzag corrective structure, it must go deeper to 78% retracement. And then four, at the level that the retracement stop, when you trace it to the uh, line of the impulse, to the impulsive wave, impulsive leg down or up, you must see either demand area or a supply area. And I've taught you a supply area for a sale you are going to see a big candle at the structural area. Okay, that big candle, look at the candle, small candle before it, look at the small candle after it. The level in between here is the what? Is the supply. Use the same trick for the demand and then you enter your market. So that's how to do it. It's not a more that you must stick with a particular time frame. No, the time frame you are going to be uh, using depends on your own personality. It's your personality that will decide the time frame you are going to be using for your direction and for uh, your entry. Is that okay? There are some scapper who will do a top-down analysis from monthly to, to, to weekly to daily to four hours. But when they are trading, they, they, they know the predominant direction. They will now use one hour for direction time frame, and they will use 50, five minutes for entry. Okay, five minutes for entry, and they are making it. They are making money, but that is not the style I have adopted. My own is I want to see my direction in monthly, in weekly, in daily, and I want to see a structural area engulfing a daily time frame. Once I see this engulfing, I step down to one hour. I want, I will see the impulse. I will now see correction to sixty-one point eight. Put my stop loss above seventy-eight percent retracement, and boom. To the downside. It's as simple as that, guys. Is there another question? Is there another question? Okay, so are you, are, you clear, are you clear with this? 
Yes, sir. Okay. No, and no. again, I'm asking my answer. You said what? Can I, go, can I go on? Yeah. Eh? Hello, sir. Can you hear me? I can hear you. You can raise your volume over there, please. Let me hear you where. Okay. Okay, sir. Now, let's take now. Okay, I want to like enter the trade now using one um, using one hour time frame. That simply means between that space of one hour now, after the one hour, the trade will be over. That is after setting my stop loss, my take profit, or maybe stop loss and take profit, like maybe based on selling and or buying of any of the currency. So it simply means after that one that after that one hour elapses, it simply means the trade I set will terminate after the one hour time frame. Is that so? No, no. Once you your, okay. your one hour is just for your entry. After you get your entry on oh. one hour, you have to come back to daily. Like for instance, this one now. Look, let me use this as an example. Euro GBP. Okay, sir. What you are saying is that if you make your entry on one hour, are you going to terminate your TP on that based on that one hour time frame? Is that mm -hmm. what you are saying? Yes, sir. If what you are, if that is what you are saying, is 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 if if I'm getting what you are saying right, you see that this structure here, we want it to come over here. All right. Oh, yes, sorry. Sir. Want this to come over here. So, but now we have seen this pattern here. And from here, we expect this market to push up. Okay. If this is what we think, right now, we have seen a candlestick pattern here that indicates that this move to the downside to complete this corrective structure is highly probable. So, if that is the case, what I just have to do now is to go to one hour time frame. Okay. I go to one hour time frame. Remember where we are going is down, down, down. Okay. What I want to do here is just to spot my entry. I take this impulse. Okay. And then I spot 50 to 61.8 right here, real quick, guys. So I spread this market. If you like, come down, go up. Anything you want to do, just come to this level. Once you come to this level, I want to see this supply level. I want to take my trade from here, put my stop loss above 78. So once it is done and it's pushing down in my favor, all I have to do to set my TP is go back to daily time frame. Okay, where do I want the market to get to? You see, expanding flat. This is where I'm expecting this market to get to. So can you see that I'm determining a TP from my daily time frame? So, so what I have to do here is simple. What I have to do here is just to pick this uh, two, put it here, boom. Stop loss above 78, tip it here. Boom. Can you see? Oh. One to six yes, risk sir. to reward, guys. This is how to go about it. Can you see? So your TP is going to uh, be determined by your uh, uh, direction time frame, which is daily time frame. And then your entry is going to be on one hour time frame. If you are spotting an impulse and corrective leg on one hour time frame, but you are only spotting, you know, completion of structure and the existence of a candlestick pattern that gives you impression of a selling pressure. Otherwise, how do you explain a situation where this powerful bliss candle on a daily time frame happened and immediately that candle was consumed? That is an existence of pressure in the system, selling pressure in the system. That is why our correction to 50 to 61.8 and the push down is going to be is likely going to be a highly prob probable trade setup. Is that okay now? Do you understand now? Yes, um, All right. Yes, so, so that is it, guys, for today. That is it, guys, for today. So like, share, and subscribe to this channel. And let's keep pushing up. Remember, this system is uh is it's not 100% guarantee. But I can, I can bet it with you. It is ninety five percent guarantee. If we lose any trade, it's a mistake. All right, based on this system. Okay. So now, sorry, please before we go. Please one more question and let's go, please. Okay, sir. Now please, no, I've not started trading because I'm still trying to understand a lot of things. And now I just understand the questions I don't ask. I'm being clear now. Now. Okay. I want to get this in clear because I've not placed a trade before. Let's assume after making all this analysis now, I entered my trade maybe on four hours, four hours time frame. Okay. And let's say, okay, I entered that trade. I entered that trade maybe around 10, around 10 a.m. in the morning. 
Now, my concern, I'm, what I'm still confused is that, does it mean this trade now will end in four hours time? That is maybe around them 2 p.m. It's not going to end. I understand what you are saying. I, mm -hmm. I'm getting you. It's not going to end in four hours time. Once you place the trade, market opens Sunday evening. Yes. All right, Sunday yes, night, sir. and it yes. ends Friday okay. night. If you leave this market yes, there, sir. if it does not hit uh, a stop loss, it will continue to run until the next Friday night. It's continue to run, it's oh. non stop. So oh. even if you don't close it, if you get to this place, if you don't set your TP, you get here uh, Friday night. If you don't close your trade, and then uh, 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 the next Sunday uh, evening market start again and it's going up, your profit will be reducing. If you don't close, it will hit your stop loss again. It means you are you make a good entry, market hits your TP. Uh, you didn't set your TP, market got there, nobody to take the profit. You went back up, it hit your stop loss. That should never happen. Okay. So oh. this four hours time frame, four hours time frame here, it just showing you that in every four hours, one candle must form. Every four hours, oh. all this candle you see is forming for four hours, mm -hmm. four hours, four hours, four hours, four hours. And then if you step it down, each of these four hours, okay, you see is when you go to one hour time frame, four of it will form. Can you see one, two, three, four? When I step down to one hour, that is how time frame is. If you go to monthly, each of this monthly candle, guys, if you step it down to a weekly, you are going to see that it's going to be four candles. Step it down to weekly, weekly. Can you see one, two, three, four, four candles? If we step it down to daily, you are going to see that it's going to be like 30 candles, 30 candles or 20, 23 candles rather, because Saturday is not a trading day. All right. So that's how it is, guys. So that will be all today, guys. So subscribe, like, uh, and share the channels. And uh, once again, my name is uh, Nathaniel Tunde, bringing you this uh, fantastic content. All right. I will do more. In as much as I see that you are liking the video, I will definitely do more. Bye for now. God bless you. Peace. Thank you. Thank you, sir.